bring a very few talks, a very few talks that will culminate into encounters and will grant us access to kingdom realities. The title of my discourse is Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Everybody, let's read as loud as we can. It is projected. One, two, go. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in so I will leave you now to personalize that scripture. When you see you, dear, you, 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 you will say me. Let's do it one more time. One, two, go. Please, just read that last sentence again. Say Christ in me. Say it again. Christ in me. The hope of glory. You see that? Glory is not the product of political manipulation. Glory is not the product of educational qualification. Glory is not the product of lobbying from office to office. He says it is something you carry that is the hope of your glory. It is Christ in you that is the hope of glory. What did God tell Adam? He says the day you eat of this tree you will die. Adam ate of the tree and continued to live. What he didn't know that he lost was that he lost the capacity to host God. And as long as God was concerned, if he's not living in you, you are not alive. So it is Christ that is in us. That is our glory. Adam lost the glory because he lost the capacity to carry God like a house. And so he began to pursue after appetites, after ambition, after things that are not powered by the inspiration of the Almighty. Because Christ in us is the hope of our glory. Now, the question is, I shared with us sometime last month, I believe, well, last month is not so far, it's just a, a week ago, huh? <laughs> that the Holy Ghost was used as a sign to discern who Jesus will be. And so John says, the one who sent me said that upon whom I see the Holy Ghost descend and remain. Amen? Amen. 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 So it is not just enough as new creations to come to Jesus, be reborn by the Spirit, but not have capacity to carry him in our, in our fullness. And not have capacity to become a communicator of his essence. The ministry of Jesus still continues, but it continues through you and I. Jesus is still walking the earth, but he walks through you and I. Jesus is alive. He is alive in me and you. The ministry of Jesus is still very potent. It is potent in the life of you and I. Now, this is what happens to every individual. There will be a contention of another government to erect another will, to erect another passion, to erect another pursuit, so that if you prosecute that will, you must have forgotten the will of he that sent you. And the Bible told us clearly, it says, I must walk the walk of he that sent me while it is day. Because the night cometh when no man can walk. This is why I am emphasizing these things. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, it says, Lo, I come in the volume of books. It is written of me to do your will. So the reason for life is to do God's will. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Ecclesiastes chapter 13. He says, fear God, keep his commandment. This is the whole duty of man. The reason for life is to keep God's commandment. John chapter 14, very quickly. John 14. It's going to be a long reading, so I want us to read together. John 14, from verse 6. From verse 6 to 18. John 14, from verse 6. To 18. Everybody, let's read together. One, two, go. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father 
except, listen, um, in verse 6, I want us to pause here so that I show you something that I believe will bring the discourse tonight into perspective. John chapter 15, verse 26. We will go back to John 14, but let's look at John 15, 26 very quickly. Remember what Jesus said in John 14, verse 6. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So you can call Jesus the way, you can call Jesus the truth, you can call Jesus the life. But now Jesus began to speak in John chapter 15, verse 26, concerning the person of the Holy Ghost. And he said, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of what? Amen. Amen. The Spirit of... Now the previous scripture I read to you, tell me part of the nomenclatures Jesus associated himself to. First, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So if you say the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth, it's another way to say he is the Spirit of of Jesus. I know you will not, you will not believe, so let's, let's invoke another scripture so that out of the mouth of two witnesses, the truth will be established. John 14, from verse 7 this time. Jesus speaking in verse 7, he says, if you have known me, you should have known the Father also. Amen? Amen. 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 If you have known me, you should have known the Father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Quickly, quickly, let's walk to you. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficed us. Jesus said unto him, Philip, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the father and how sayest thou show us the father let me explain something very quickly <laughs> the same way i was laboring to show you that the holy ghost is the spirit of jesus and that jesus will be sending himself to us listen listen that's the same way I am now laboring to show you that Jesus could not do anything without the spirit of the Father. Because the Father, no man has seen God except his Son, which is his only begotten, full of grace and truth. So it is Jesus that is the express image of the invincible God. So if Jesus is the express image of the invincible God, anybody that has seen Jesus has seen God. Because Jesus is God's image. Amen? Amen? So people now told Jesus that please help us reveal the Father to us. Show us the Father. Jesus says, how are you looking at me? And you are still asking to see the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen? Amen. If you are a Bible student, did you remember when Jesus said, I do nothing of my own accord, but that which I see the Father do, so I do. Amen? Do you remember Jesus saying, I can of my own self do nothing? Huh? Now, everything that was the delicate arrangement between the Father and Jesus was exactly what Jesus was bringing us as a church into. Because what Jesus was bringing us as a church into now is the capacity to be enabled, to be quickened by a spirit and then leave the interest of that spirit. So that it is no longer you that lives, but Christ that lives in you. So if Jesus now lives in you, Jesus will carry out his will through you. This is why you are crucified with Christ. But not too many people surrender their life on that cross. When Jesus says, Eli, Eloi, Eloi, rather, Lama Sabak Tani, many people didn't say that with him. So they, they stayed, they, they hid, they pretended like they, they, they died. And so they took all of them to the tomb they fasted for three days inside the tomb. And when Jesus came out, they came out as an old man. The only thing they did was that they associated with the cross. Because if you died, your old life should not be alive. 
if masturbation, pornography, lying, and all kinds of cord of compromise has binded your soul and you died in Christ, the proof that you died is that the affinities of that nature too should die. At best, we are refurbishing the old man. We are renovating the old man. We don't want to lose it. The instruction is that the corn of wheat must fall to the ground and die. You see that place of death? There are only a few believers that walk to the front of the cross and trade their life and say, my own life ended from today. Jesus, you live through this body from today. Now, if Jesus becomes the custodian of your body, can you fornicate with that body? If Jesus becomes the custodian of your body, can you gossip with that body? It is still your body. That's why you are doing what you are doing with it because it is not in the custody of Jesus. It's not your Lord. If he becomes your Lord, see what will happen naturally. You, hi, hi. Have you seen a madman before? Do you know that the madman is not in charge of his body? It is the spirit that has possessed him that is using that body to carry out his merchandise. So if the spirit of he that rose up Christ from the dead can dwell in you, that spirit should be able to live out its desire through you. I am provoking somebody to desire the Holy Ghost. Don't pretend like, like he is in you and you are just speaking dry tongue. Tongue without power. Meanwhile, part of the first thing the Holy Ghost brings to you is the capacity to become sons of God. He says, and ye shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, then you can be witnesses. As many have received him, to them he gave power to become what? Sons. So the first level of power we encounter when we receive him is power to live up to the nature of God. Not power over demon. Not even power over Satan. It is power to have capacity to flesh out the nature of God. My pain, my pain is that if the rapture sounds now, I am persuaded a bulk of church members will be left behind. There is one compromise here, one iniquity here, one sin here, all kinds of hidden things. Satan knows we have skeletons in our cupboard. He knows the bankruptcy of power in this generation is the product of our fraternity with altars of corruption. This is why his hands have looked short in our generation. This is why it looks like his ears are far from us. He says his hands are not too short that he cannot deliver. Neither are his ears dull that he cannot hear. He says, but our iniquity have separated between us and our God. Iniquity. I wish for those days when a sinner will come out and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. And like play, you will watch the lady with her mini skirt. From that crusade, like a joke, she goes back home. After a month, come and check her. The life in her inside is affecting her dress sense now. Like a joke, all her friends that are product of that wayward lifestyle, she has edited them out of her life. Transformation is proof that you came under God. You cannot remain the same as you were in the days where you were a sinner and you are claiming that it's about the inside. It's about the inside. It's the inside. God, God sees the inside. Don't judge. <laughs> you are showing somebody, see what you... He said, don't judge. Judge net. <laughs> you will go to hellfire like a joke. Like a joke. You are, you are heading deeper and deeper into chambers of... You know what? When they came, they actually came to lay down their life. They knew that they were stepping aside. They knew. You know, they, they told me the story of a drunk. Was he a drunk or a smoker? He's a smoker. They've been preaching to him, preaching to him. He would, he would, while you are preaching, he will light another cigarette and, and take a long drag. Why the Bible is open like this in his front as we are teaching? He would now tell them that I'm not ready. Sometimes as you are preaching, he will use his tongue and create a cycle inside the smoke and do like this. 
then you, you see a smoke with a cycle. <laughs> Came to pass that on a day where the preacher was not even preaching about salvation, he was, he was focusing on other subjects of the kingdom. He saw the smoker walking into the church. And the guy walked from the back, came straight to the pulpit and knelt down and said, I am ready. He came into church with a cigarette in his hand. He said, are you ready to receive Jesus? He said, yes. So what are you still doing with the cigarette? He said, I want to take the last drug. <laughs> this is a sin now. He knows that after Jesus, this thing should never happen again. So that consciousness was in him. You, you give your life to Jesus and you collect it back. You give your life to Jesus, you are still the owner of your life. You give your life to Jesus and you live after your own affection. Is our life with him? If you can't give your life to him, he cannot live in you. This is why we don't have capacity to carry God. Meanwhile, it is Christ in you. That is the hope of your glory. Not Christ with you. In you. In you. Please say in me. In me. Say it again. In me. in me. Do you know what it means to host the president? If information gets to you now that Tinubu intends to spend the night in your bedroom. What you do is that you will escape from this service now like this and run and go and change your bedsheet. That, that's... <laughs> That's one of the first level. Then, all the careless things you kept laying around in your bedroom, you will make sure everything suddenly takes alignment. You will make sure the scent in the room. My God. That your bulb that died, that you have not changed for many years, you, suddenly you will change it. You know who you are trying to host? A man. Now, how do you think? Hi, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. You know why? He wants to live inside you. It is your heart that is his house. But many of us, we want to come near Jesus and do like this. Come. How far? My guy, my guy. Jesus, my elder brother. Jesus, the Savior. And then associate with him. People see you with him. Then you go back. No Jesus inside. He does not want to associate with you. He wants to live within you. It is Christ, I repeat again, in you. That is the hope of your glory. It says they draw near me with their mouth but their heart is far from me as I'm speaking to you now is a heart check and if you are bedeviled by strange ailment in the spirit there are infirmities of the soul the way you have infirmities of the body you have malaria, you have typhoid you have high fever, you have gonorrhea, syphilis there are infirmities of the soul there are certain signs that when you see about your spiritual posture, you know that your soul has this particular ailment. For example, prayerlessness is a symptom of a sickness. Can I share something with you? Amen. The appetite for sin is different from the sin as an action itself. You can be a Christian and be struggling with the yearning for sin. Every day you are just saying, Holy Ghost, please help me overcome. Help me overcome. There is a, an active appetite producing that yearning for sin. If you want to overcome, that appetite must be dealt with. Because you might be strong today and overcome, but would you be strong tomorrow? So deal with the root cause, the appetite, the nature that is producing this yearning for the sin. We don't want it. We want to renovate an old life. Change the roof. Put paint. But the same old structure. Let's take our reading so that we can pray. And we can minister to people as God has intended for the night. John chapter 14. think we're in verse 8. So let's read together. Verse 8. Jesus said unto him, 
Have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Meanwhile, no man has seen the Father, but the only thing men have interacted with during the mosaic operations was the voice of God. The voice of God. And the voice of God is the word of God. Now, that word of God is the only thing man has interacted with, including Adam. What Adam heard was the walking voice of God. The Bible says there are three that bear witness in the heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And I told us Jesus is the image of the invincible God. So if you ever see God, who you will see is Jesus. He is God's image. He is God's body. However, a child was born frail, frail in his manifestation when Herod was moved with unholy zeal to kill all the infants around that age group in order to avert a prophecy. Because of how frail he was, they needed to take Jesus and run to Egypt. Now I want you to imagine the creator of heaven and earth was they, they, they ran with him so that a man would not kill him. The angel came and advised Joseph that they should not bring him back until they hear the news that Herod was dead. That's the creator of heaven and earth. Because as at that point, all you can trace and relate with him is flesh and blood, humanity. Came to pass that in the baptismal service of John, a spirit came upon him. See what happened to him. John took an adult, a man that knows the difference between good and bad, a man that could make logical decisions. That man came willingly before John, and John took that man, dipped him into water until his head was lost inside the water. He was completely submerged. And that is exactly what it means to be born again. It means your old identity was lost. You died. You were buried in the water. Then they brought out another man, which is the new man. This is what baptism of water was communicating. That immediately after this, you will now have the capacity to carry the Holy Ghost. Because you must be reborn before the Holy Ghost can tabernacle upon you. Now, when we say we give our life to Jesus and we cannot carry the Holy Ghost and we cannot live up to his demand and his desires for our life and we cannot become an extension of kingdom purposes. The whole process of being born again then has not achieved its desired goal because the reason to be born is so that you can now carry God. Why are you born again? And you are looking for other children of God's number so that they can help you talk to God that is your father. Because transformation, transformation is not factored into our pursuit. Why are you born again and the slightest sign Satan shows? Maybe your curtain moved in the night. <laughs> Somebody told me that there's one cat, there's one cat that used to come and cry. That whenever the cat cry, something bad will happen. So I now imagined a man in the image of God. In fact, in Psalm 86, he says, I say unto you, Psalm 82 rather, ye are gods. All of you are children of the... So man, God versus cat. And God cannot sleep. God is now calling for all nights involving different prayer warriors and say, we need... So, you now subscripted 15 of us to challenge one cat. I wonder how that cat will be walking that night. <laughs> he will say, he will say you, don't, you, don't, you don't know my identity. <laughs> my people perish for lack of knowledge. We don't want to grow. We don't want to press. In crude oil, when you get it directly from the ground, 
as hydrocarbon. Ah, those who didn't attend their science classes, this example will, will be above your head, but I will still give it all the same. Now, there are over 6,000 products. Over 6,000 products that are products of crude oil alone. But they are all found at different temperatures. There's a temperature that you will get diesel. There's a temperature you will get wax. There's a temperature you will get kerosene. There's a temperature you will get fuel, the normal petrol. There's a temperature you will get LPG, the liquefied petroleum gas. Now, everything you are looking for is in different temperatures. That's, that's the Jesus that is in you. If you intensify at different temperatures, you will be encountering different dimensions of him. But from one crude oil, you can have 600 products. Did I say 600? 6,000. 6,000 different products. All of value. But people don't want to own the refinery. Because what it means to refine is that there must be fire on that altar. You, 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 are, you are carrying Christ in you. But you are living like a servant. You are a victim. Somebody is carrying Jesus. Yet Satan lock him in one door and say, if, if I help him. But Jesus is inside you. You didn't want to own the refinery. There is a place when you own the refinery. Eh? There is a place where the first thing you will start touching is faith. That is, that is one of the first products. You start, you start praying. You are praying. A confidence will enter you that uh -uh, my life is not supposed to be like this. My life is not supposed to end like this. I know God. I should not be like every other person. Sickness should not be in my body. You will start challenging the things that every other person embraced. You have, you have touched one of the products. That hydrocarbon called Christ in you. Eh? You have touched one. One is faith. As you intensify it, you will now start realizing that actually the things you are running away from, they can run from you. There is a night you will just be praying and the temperature will hit a level. They will give you power. It is in that night a boldness to go to where your, your, your elders fell. The people before you, the, the altars that swallowed them. Something divine will arrest your vocal cord. Meanwhile, you cannot use bold face to challenge altars. It is until the refinery is on. Until the temperature has high. You know, there are many of us, you don't know that the things that look so impossible on your inside, it is only fire away. Can you tell the person by your side, the kingdom of God is within you? Come on, say it like you mean it. The kingdom of God is within you. Now, ask them this question. That kingdom that is in you, what have you done with it? You are carrying a kingdom. Inside this small you, a kingdom. Then you slept in the night. Two trainee witches came and pressed you. You are trying to shout, G, 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 you cannot go. And they are happy. Because the refinery is not on. You are cold. You are cold. Anytime Satan wants to keep you complacent, he allows you to do some religious activity here and there so that at best you are lukewarm. When he traps you in that lukewarm state, you are neither hot, you are not cold. You are just in between. This is the greater population of Christendom, a lukewarm generation. You are not on fire. There is a temperature you are pressing. You are pressing. Then the inherent gifts of the spirits which is your dominion into this is what makes you unique in your generation your certificate has no uniqueness even if you graduated with first class you are not the first first class there are many waiting for you in the labor market amen, amen. i used to pride myself in my intelligence before i realized that it is just the places that i have continued to do business around i remember writing one exam and i felt like after this exam, they will know. They will know that among men there are men. Guess what? I was not in the first ten. I now started suspecting that there is foul play. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is that hi. See, can I explain something to you? 
the part of spiritual progress was never designed to have an end. It will continue to explore Jesus till you die. Every day you'll be finding new fragrance. And if you are truly exploring him, that part is addictive. You want to touch the next level of glory. There is a realm if you press into your affections will leave this world. That is why they advise people to marry quickly before you, you if, if you touch that place. <laughs> you are no longer with men. Your affections will, it will join you from this world. That's, that's the place people like Chris Oyakilome has entered. The affection has left this world. They are now in between. Should I go and join the master? Then the master will say, I need you to do some work here. But they say, talk. why? Let's, let me just finish quick. It is at that point, there is nothing earthly that has any hold on your soul. You have seen something divine. You have fraternized with an economy that the mundane cannot satisfy. You have seen a glory that nothing on earth can compare with. You have beheld beauty. So forget, hi. It is that point that you see a person looking for sol solitary places. Your friends are saying, let's hang out. Every time people are around, it's like noise, distraction. Your greatest company is the Holy Ghost. You just want to stay with him. That's where you find your joy. You see, if you are here and you say you are depressed because nobody calls you, nobody cares, nobody cares. It's when I die that they will now, you are a joker. You don't know what they call joy in the Holy Ghost. See what the Bible says the kingdom is. It says it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's, that's that point where you can lock your door for one week. You didn't know that it's up to one week. The only reason why you stepped out is because the master's bidding, the master's bidding demands your attention. When you enter that place where you have embraced yourself from the vistas of God's gaze, you cannot feel unloved because man don't love you. It is such people that can now love genuinely because you are loved already. Now we have many helpless people who are so insecure and you are wearying people even in your relationship. Jesus wants to help somebody now. How do you expect a man to convince and help you fill up that space that only eternity should occupy? This is where many women, many men become disappointed because they want a man to stand where only God can occupy. You have not given your heart to the... the you know, I was advising some brothers recently. A lady that does not honor, is not faithful to the God that gave her life. She is not talking to the person who woke her up every morning. A lady that is not faithful to the God who created her and gave her life. You think she'll be faithful to you. You are a joker. This is why when I see people go into the, 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 the clan of the Gentiles and go and carry a bride, I'm just, I'm just staying like, like this. It's a matter of time. You say, but she's a very calm, a very collected. I like the way she dresses. I like the way she carries out. You know all these church girls, they don't have all the swag. You will soon discover something. Your life will be added to part of this book of lamentations. You know the advice of Abraham to his servant? He said, don't go to any of them. That's a sign that I'm not supposed to talk about these things today. We will we, we'll continue. <laughs> so, um... See, it's not just about Christianity. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about values and belief systems. We're talking about atmospheres around your home. We're talking about access points of demonic interference. Now,
Aleluia. Let's, let's continue the scripture quickly. The Bible says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words, Jesus says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. So Jesus was carrying the Father. Amen? Just as you are supposed to carry the Holy Ghost. And I showed you the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. So you are supposed to carry Jesus on your inside. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my father. Listen, let me tell you what this means. Jesus says, because the father is tabernacled on my inside, I am an extension of his benevolence to creation. I am a communication of his mercy and his good will towards creation. He says, if me, I am in you, you will do greater work than me when I carried the father because now it won't just be only me because me now I have gone to the father, you will be a communicator now revealing the dimension of the father and having the person of Jesus who have equipped, prepared giving you capacity to wield these things as though you are the one who have operated in Christ Jesus all along. So what you have now is the advantage of time. I have told you before now that it is like Jesus continuing to live his life through you. Like he is, he is, he is continuing his ministry through you. But this time he is doing it as in a glorified form that he has received all powers both in heaven and on earth the keys of hell and the grave has now been given to him. So you now, you can walk in that reality because it is Jesus that is continuing his life through you. Because I go to the Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. So now the glory of the Father is tied to how much of the Son can be revealed. The more we reveal Jesus, that's the more glory that goes to the Father. Because Jesus carried the Father, we carried him within us. It is Christ that is in us. So for us to live now is Christ, and if we die, is gain. I'm heading somewhere. I want to tie it up. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Next verse. And I will pray the Father. Everybody, let's read together. One, two, go. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Next verse, quickly. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. Listen. I know you didn't see what I was showing you. Did you see it? It's a lie. I pretend. He says, see, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him he said but you, you know him the spirit of truth, you know him so people can say okay maybe he's, he's not talking about the Holy Ghost he now says for he dwelleth dwelleth means now so he is the one talking with you now 
He says, for he dwelleth with you, but because he has not died, because he has not been resurrected, because he has not been glorified, so the Holy Ghost himself has not been released. That's why you have, and he shall be, shall, his future. So for now, he is with you, but in the future, he shall be in you. Is that in the Bible? Amen. Amen. So rejoice now that he is with you, but a time is coming. If you don't have him in you, you are outdated. Next verse. This is, this is the conclusion. If you fear Jesus, read it very loud. One, two, go. I will not leave you comfortless. So who is the Holy Ghost? He says, I will come. I am the one that is coming to you. The comforter I told you about, I will not leave you without comfort. I will come to you. When you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Do you understand what happened to you? You received the Holy Ghost. That day where you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, you received the Holy Ghost. I'm teaching you a doctrine. This is the part of the early apostles. The Bible says, and ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So, Holy Ghost come first before power. You receive power after Holy Ghost. If I say you will receive money after clothes, it means you will receive clothes first, then money will be given to you. It says you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So what many of us are calling the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the baptism of power. Because the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Ghost entered you. Now you need to put on the refinery. On the refinery! Some of you, by now, your eye, your eye, is supposed to be seeing open visions. But you didn't increase temperature. So all of the products that are inside that, hey, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is like that hydrocarbon. You need to continue to put different, at different temperature, you will hit different products. Some of you, you are a prophet, a prophet unto the nations. But at this level, you are not even a prophet to your family. Because no fire, no fire to reveal the prophetic. There is a prayer quorum, you hit, and the temperature is generated. Your eye will open suddenly. You will think that, you will think that everybody saw it. You will ask people, you will find out it's only your eye. It's only your eye that saw it. It is at that point the word of wisdom will become a gift you wield. You will open your mouth and an ancient spirit will seize your vocal cord. And when you speak, you yourself will go and sit down and say, am I the one that is advising people like this? The things you said, you didn't know it before now. It is not the product of mental preparation. It is access, access to the resource base of a spirit because you have put on the refinery. This is why he says men ought always to pray. Because if you don't pray, you will never live up to your true capacities. Everything God has wired within you is a kingdom. He says the kingdom of God is within you. That kingdom in you, you can quicken it. You can expose it. You can reveal the beauties and powers of that kingdom by putting on the refinery. Tarie in Jerusalem until ye be endured. Listen. It was prayer. It was prayer that is the beginning of the baptism. It was prayer that is the foundation of the visitation. It is prayer. Many of us sitting here, you are growing on every front except prayer. No progress on prayer. You just believe. You just believe that you are making progress. Who told you? There are many things about your identity you will never touch. Many of you, you are supposed to be, you are supposed to be like a seraph among men by now. That when you open the scriptures, the hidden scrolls of God, you will crack them open. It is the glory of kings to conceal a matter. Huh? No, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the honor of kings to search it out. So, some of you by now, you ought to be like an archaeologist, searching out mysteries and secrets hidden, hidden for many generations. So, because of you, you drew a truth into your timeline. Something your, your generation have never seen. 
You prayed until you touched that scripture and it broke like bread. Look at what he told Daniel. He says, seal it. Seal it. It's for an appointed time. This is how we open the Bible and we think we understand what is written. There's a seal there. You don't know what he's saying until a man who can journey far enough and come back with high. Jesus. Revelation. Revelation is part of the token. When you continue pressing inside fire, a time will come. Scriptures will start talking to you as though it is you and God that sat down and they are writing it. You will be reading scripture and scripture will be linking themselves to another scripture. And you will be going from Genesis to Jeremiah to Luke and everything is coming together. No, it's not man again. You have touched a temperature in God. It is at that point, it is at that point, you will not only say the Bible said, you will say God said. Because at that point, it is God that spoke to you. It's not a book. It's not a book again. You heard the utterances of God. You heard the echoes of Adonai. People don't want to put on the refinery. There is a temperature. There is a temperature in the path of spiritual progress you hit. And favor become your normal lifestyle. Everywhere you go, there is somebody stationed, somebody positioned to make sure you can never beg for bread and you can never go hungry. It's called favor, but it is at an energy level. It is at an energy level. It's not at the surface. It is at an energy level. You that nobody has blessed before. You that suffer and labor for everything you get. A season will come upon you as you continue to press, as you continue to labor. You will begin to find out that there are different things in your life that is the product of favor. Not, not hard work again. It's because you have labored. at me, saints of God. It says in Jude chapter 1 verse 20, building up yourself, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You are the one, you are the one, you are the one to build yourself. You are the one to build yourself. Idahosa was born as a baby. He was born as a baby. He too, he gave his life to Jesus. But he submitted himself to transformation. Catherine Kuhlman, born as a baby, gave her life to Jesus, submitted herself to transformation. John G. Lake, born as a baby, gave his life to Jesus, submitted to transformation, and then emerged. Why are you so satisfied? Why are you so satisfied? And you have not touched anything in God. But you are already satisfied. You have retired already. If you know where you are, you will be praying. You will be praying if you know where you are. If you know where you are. Jesus, although he is God, Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. Jesus studied the word. Jesus prayed. Jesus fasted. Who told you? Who told you? 
that you are okay like this. Why are you not praying? Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, He's the Holy Ghost, He's the Holy Ghost, He's the Holy Ghost, He's the Holy Ghost. genuinely, consciously step out of the way for Jesus to live through your life. You want to give your life to him willingly, intentionally and consciously. Run out, run out now, come. giving your life to Jesus before but you are still struggling with appetites you are still challenged you cannot live in spiritual consistency brother sister run out come now come come let's wave goodbye let's wave goodbye wave goodbye to a pattern
enough of exciting ourselves. Enough of talking hollow things. But the fruits, the fruits of conversion is not in us. Haya, 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 haya. Mbaka de Yesu, komi azama panza. Haya, 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 haya. Mbaka de Yesu, komi azama panza. Nasa hanuna. I can take no Mazankoma, Mayama Nasa Hanuna. and my sisters out here the Holy Ghost will be showing some people he, he just told me now he will be showing some people what they could have been if they had yielded to his government some of you will have a glimpse of where you could have been operating of your standing if you had committed and yielded to consecration and yielded to his bidding for your life Holy Ghost You, you who is the voice, the voice of God to your generation, see what you have become. See what you have become. You can't even hear the echoes of God. You who is a watchman, a watchman over nations, see what you have become. pray together everybody everybody here with me let's pray together say Lord Jesus I need you to say it in a way that shows you are unapologetic about your decision say Lord Jesus today I wave goodbye to the world I wave goodbye to the life of sin I wave goodbye to the life of weaknesses and I embrace your sacrifice. I accept that you died for me. I accept I died in you. I accept that you were resurrected. And I accept that I was raised in you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And all things have become new. Today, I accept your sacrifice. So I am in you. I am a new creature. All old things are passed away. And all things are made new. For as many as receive you, you give power to become children of God. Today, I receive you. So I receive power to become a child of God. I believe in my heart, so I confess with my mouth that I am born again. I am a child of God. Congratulations. Congratulations. 
you are welcome to the family of God. Congratulations. Listen, everybody who have come out, everybody who have made a decision, I congratulate you. There is yet another encounter God has for us. Please, please, just go to your seat quickly. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Hey, breathe on me. Hey, breathe on me. Hey, breathe on me. Affect my life. Breathe on me. As I look to you for life, affect my life, breathe on me. As I look to you for life. Listen, Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I need you to pray one prayer honestly with a yearning from the depth of your heart. Say, Jesus, come live in me. Come live in me. Spirit of Jesus, precious Holy Ghost, breathe upon me. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. Make that your prayer. Make that your prayer. Fill me up. Fill me up, Holy Ghost. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. Are you sure you know what you are praying about? If you know, if you know what you are contending for, fill me up. He's the center of life. It's not a time to be distracted. If you think you are already filled with the Holy Ghost and you think you don't need another measure, you are proud. Don't leave me like this. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Don't leave me like this. Pastors, pray. You need the Holy Ghost. Worship leaders, pray. You need the Holy Ghost. Pray. You need the Holy Ghost. Brother, pray. Sister, pray. I need you.
I need you, Holy Ghost. I need you. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. of affliction, delays, resistance, all kinds of stagnation, everything that has challenged God's people. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is deliverance. There is liberty. There is freedom. Now the Lord is that Spirit. 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 I. Everybody, everybody, can you pray in tongues now? Pray in tongues. 
Pray in tongues. Tell something on your inside. Louder, 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 louder. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, touch, 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 touch. Lord is, there is liberty. Your story is changing. Your story is changing. Your story is changing because the Spirit of God now dwells in you. Because the Spirit of God now dwells in you. upon you. The Holy Ghost is filling us up. He's saturating us. He's overwhelming us. He's the Spirit of God. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Oh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Spirit of Jesus. Spirit of Jesus, Spirit of Jesus, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, move, 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 overwhelm them, overwhelm them, fill them up, fill this place up with your spirits and saturate us, saturate us, saturate us. Saturate us, saturate us.
want to live above sin? You want to live above corruption? Insist, insist, Holy Ghost. Abide in me, abide, 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 abide. Ujena mu ahe, amya no ahe. 